Today AMD has announced the Radeon RX 6700 XT, a new upper mid-range GPU. We have all the details on pricing, specs and availability, plus some updates on new features, so let's get into it. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time to talk about a new graphics card that is supposedly going to be hitting store shelves shortly, or should I say hitting those shelves for all of a few seconds before it completely sells out everywhere and can only be bought on eBay for ridiculously inflated prices. What a world we live in right now, just a great time to be talking about GPU launches, although to be fair, the more options that hit the market, the better supply should get over time. So here's the basics. The AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT will be available on March 18th with a price tag of 479 US dollars. And I use the term available and price tag with the least amount of certainty and conviction I could possibly give to those statements because these things are all a bit meaningless right now. In these sorts of videos, I typically provide an analysis of where I feel the product sits in the market based on the performance shown, you know, whether it's too expensive, looking like a good deal or whatever, but in this situation, it doesn't feel worth it given there is no guarantee we'll see cards at that price or at least at that price for any significant amount of time. The main questions I'm sure many of you will be having are not gonna be about performance, but around availability. So I'll address that first. I did get the opportunity to ask AMD some questions about availability. So hopefully these answers will be very useful to you. AMD is clearly aware of the high demand situation in the market right now, as well as their constrained supply. However, AMD did tell me that for this product that sits in the middle of their lineup, they are anticipating demand to be higher than with something like the RX 6800 and RX 6800 XT, so they have planned supply accordingly. AMD even said that they are on track to have significantly more GPUs available for sale at launch. Now, of course, that could mean the difference between 10 cards you can buy and 20 cards, neither of which would be acceptable. So it's a waiting game to see what the situation is like come March 18th. I think it's also important to note that should AMD allocate some of their precious 7 nanometer wafer supply to the RX 6700 XT, they should be able to make more of these mid-range GPUs than they would of a higher end product. The 6700 XT uses a smaller GPU die, different from the 6800 series. So theoretically, you could make more 6700 XTs per wafer. This has provided supply for other components like GDDR memory and so on hold strong, which is no guarantee in the current climate. As well as planning for higher demand, AMD have said that they are taking steps to reduce the likelihood of bots and scalpers buying this new GPU. This includes working with retailers to limit orders and block bot purchases, a strategy I don't think will be too successful for the most part, maybe outside of AMD's own website where they will be selling the card. They're also trying to get more of these GPUs into physical retail stores so you can walk in and buy them in person, which would theoretically reduce scalper purchases as well. Again, I say theoretically because I have no idea whether this will actually take place or work. Of course, a lot of companies these days are framing the GPU market around record demand, AMD included, but supply is also crucial. You could forgive AMD if they made, let's say, a million of these GPUs when demand was 2 million, but if they instead make just 10,000, then blame it on demand, that wouldn't be ideal. So that's something we'll be monitoring for sure. The other thing AMD are doing to improve supply is release both the AMD reference model and custom AIB cards on the same date. This is in contrast to the previous launch where the AIB cards came several weeks after the reference model. AMD says that with more cards and options to buy, supply should be better, although I'm not sure how this would impact supply in the weeks to come, if it has any impact at all. It could just bounce the supply between AMD and AIBs at launch, you know, more AIB cards, less reference, rather than increasing the total supply. And there's a potential issue down the line for enthusiast buyers of the RX 6700 XT. AMD has announced that pre-built systems from OEMs and system builders featuring this GPU will also be available sometime in March. Now, AMD says the benefit of this is that a gamer is more likely to buy a pre-built system than a scalper or a crypto miner, thus giving the GPU to the right person. However, allocating some supply to system builders will, of course, reduce regular supply for DIY builders. Now, AMD has every right to sell their product to whoever they want to, but it would sting if the 6700 XT sold out instantly everywhere, while pre-built systems sit on shelves at inflated prices. 
And I'm spending so much time on availability here because really, the rest of AMD's announcements today don't matter if you can't buy their card. In the current GPU climate, literally the only thing that actually matters is whether you can buy one. Performance doesn't matter if only 50 graphics cards are available to buy in your region. Value doesn't matter when every other product is sold out. So while AMD has again made some claims here about what they are doing to improve supply given the disastrous RX 6800 series launch, I don't think there is much trust in the enthusiast community, certainly not to take their word on face value. It will be up to them to execute and execute better than they did last time while being severely constrained in many ways. However, I also understand that some people will be interested in the rest of what AMD showed, so let's talk about that stuff. At the very least, this will give you an idea of what to expect when you can actually buy one, whenever that may be. So the Radeon RX 6700 XT is a new RDNA 2 based GPU with a new die, so it's not a cut down version of existing higher tier cards. It features 40 compute units with 96MB of infinity cache and clocks up to 2424MHz game clock on AMD's reference model. In comparison, the RX 6800 packs 60 compute units but at a much lower 1815 MHz game clock. So the 6700 XT provides two thirds the compute units but is clocking those units 33% higher. This also explains why the 6700 XT has a 230 watt board power rating, only slightly down from 250 watts with the 6800. Increasing clocks consumes relatively more power than increasing compute units. Lesser infinity cache of 96 versus 128 megabytes on AMD 6800 series will also impact performance. The memory subsystem remains quite competent in today's market with 12GB of GDDR6 at unspecified clocks, and this card having that much VRAM I have no doubt influenced Nvidia's decision to also put 12GB on the RTX 3060. It seems clear Nvidia knew AMD would have a large VRAM buffer on their mid-tier card and adjusted the RTX 3060 accordingly. AMD provided a slide showing several of today's games allocating more than 8GB of memory at 1440p with maximum settings, although as this is just allocation, the performance and visual benefits vary from game to game. Oh, and AMD confirmed that all RX 6700 XT GPUs would have 12GB of VRAM, so there is no alternate option, no 8 or 6GB models will be made. In terms of features, there isn't much to say here that we don't already know, given the 6700 XT uses the same architecture as other 6000 series GPUs. So AMD are claiming a substantial efficiency jump over the previous generation and support for features like DirectX 12 Ultimate and Ray Tracing. We have a good insight into how those things work in this architecture from their previous release. The focus for AMD's performance numbers today was 1440p gaming, they are calling this the ultimate experience for maximum quality 1440p gaming. The first performance slide concerns people upgrading from either the GTX 1070 Ti or RTX 2080 Super, showing the RX 6700 XT outperforming those GPUs. Later they also compare the 6700 XT to the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3070 in a range of today's games, although with SAM enabled. In 5 of the 8 games, AMD showed the 6700 XT beating the RTX 3070, and in a further 2 it sat between the 3070 and 3060 Ti. In one title, it was slower than both Nvidia GPUs. We'll have to wait for Steve's benchmark review around release to figure out exactly where it sits, but this is about where you'd expect given the pricing. It's slightly cheaper than the RTX 3070, so it would want to be around RTX 3070 performance to succeed, if these cards were available at MSRP of course. What remains unclear is ray tracing performance. It wasn't made clear whether AMD was testing these games with or without ray tracing enabled in Watch Dogs Legion for example, but I doubt it given where AMD currently sits in terms of ray tracing performance. Our viewers have previously indicated that if an AMD GPU can't match an Nvidia GPU in ray tracing despite having equivalent rasterization performance, then that AMD GPU should be about 10% cheaper or more. So that's something that will require benchmarking as well to see where it ends up. As for various software features, I have some updates from AMD as well. Firstly, SAM support is coming to Ryzen 3000 processors very shortly, meaning Zen 2 processors will support the feature alongside Zen 3. This will require a BIOS update on the CPU slash motherboard side, and from there, any RX 6000 GPUs will begin working with Ryzen 3000 CPUs for resizable bar. I'd imagine Nvidia GPUs that support resizable bar will also begin to function, like the RTX 3060, but we didn't get confirmation on that. Obviously, is 
AMD aren't going to talk about their competitors' products. Unfortunately, AMD did not comment on whether SAM would come to older Ryzen parts such as Ryzen 2000 or 1000 series, saying they are working their way down the stack. In fact, you'll see in a footnote on the slide here that it's not even the entire Ryzen 3000 series that's supported, just Zen 2 based processors. Zen Plus APUs, so the Ryzen 5 3400G and Ryzen 3 3200G, are not supported either. There are no updates on AMD's DLSS competitor, FidelityFX Super Resolution. While it is listed on AMD's slide here again, the company said this feature is not ready and not available for use at this point. This is a big blow to the prospects of the RX 6700 XT, given the increasing strength of DLSS as a feature given more games are being updated to support it. Of course, there isn't a huge rush right now given GPU supply issues, but when things return to normal it will be crucial for AMD to compete in this space. AMD has updated two of their own features though. Radeon Anti-Lag now supports DirectX 12 titles, reducing latency by optimizing buffers in GPU-limited environments. Previously, this feature only supported DirectX 9 and 11 titles. Radeon Boost is also getting an update to support motion-adaptive variable rate shading in DirectX 12 games. Previously, Radeon Boost only modified the overall render resolution when mouse movement was detected in supported DirectX 11 titles. Now with this update, DirectX 12 titles will be able to vary VRS depending on the level of motion, which should present a performance improvement with little visual loss. This new feature is exclusive to RX 6000 series GPUs, while the rest of Radeon Boost is supported back to the RX 400 series as it's always been. And that pretty much does it for today's announcements. As you'll notice, there is no talk of a Radeon RX 6700, no talk of multiple tiers of products or anything like that, just a single RX 6700 XT, which makes sense as what we've been seeing from other GPU launches is that binned or cut down versions just aren't being prioritized right now for production. All the focus for these Navi dies is on the full variant going into the 6700 XT, and I would expect if there are any sufficient binned dies that later on we might get a lower tier model, but of course AMD didn't talk about that at all. Anyway, that's it for this video. That's all the news we have for this one. You will hopefully see our review of the 6700 XT around that March 18th launch date. Not exactly sure on the timing there, but they're going on sale in the middle of this month. You'll expect reviews around that point as well. Um, and yeah, let's just hope the availability issue is sorted or at least is available in some sort of reasonable supply here because, yeah, otherwise there's not going to be a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. If you're interested in supporting the channel and the stuff that we do, you can, of course, sign up to our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Uh, thanks to all the support we've been getting there in the past couple of days, especially due to the fact that we were shadow banned from the YouTube platform for a little bit there. So, yeah, really appreciate all the support. Anyway, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one.